If you have your Bibles, come please to the book of Luke, Luke chapter number nine, Luke chapter number nine. We're going to have to just uh, jump right in because people are fading fast. It's been a long day. Everyone that passed out a flyer, God saw it. Everyone that uh, helped on a route, helped in a class, the Lord saw it. Those who prayed, those of you online who are ill, and I know several of you, uh, you were not able to attend or serve, but I know that you prayed, and I could sense it, and we thank you, and the Lord's going to reward you one day for that. I want to speak for just a few moments. I've got my watch off right now on this subject, what to do on the mountaintop, what to do on the mountaintop. Uh, most every church on the West Coast today would be thrilled to have a day where they had 79 people saved. This is truly a mountaintop experience. And so what do we do when we have these mountaintop days? Uh, where the Bible took place, there are a lot of mountains and valleys, much like Napa Valley. Uh, Jerusalem is uh, the city built, uh, it's built on a hill. It's a mount. It's called Mount Zion. So you cannot have mountaintops without valleys. And so we notice this here in Luke chapter 9. Notice what happens. Uh, Jesus is constantly teaching Luke chapter 9 verse 28. And it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and James and John and went up into a mountain to pray. Now think about that just for a moment, how that would be today. Can you imagine, men, if uh, you got a phone call or a text from another man in the church and they just said, I was wondering if I could pick you up, let's go somewhere. Most men would think, okay, he's taking me to lunch. Or you'd think, so where are we going? We're going to work out at the gym or a car show? Uh, where are you taking me? No, I'm picking up a couple other guys. We're just going to go on top of Mount Vita Road and, and pray for an hour. To these disciples, it was not unusual. For most of us, it'd be like, no one's ever asked me to do that. You know, not that I'm against it, but you know, we're so busy. But Jesus took his three key disciples and said, we're going on top of this mountain and we're going to pray. And notice what happens here, verse 29. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening. We call this the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus' glorified body comes upon him. And behold, there talk with him two men. So is heaven real? Has anyone ever come back and told us about it? Notice who these two men were, Moses and Elias. It is very possible they will be the two witnesses at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. Very possible because the type miracles they did in the Old Testament, it's the same miracles the two witnesses will do in front of the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. And so that could be just right around the corner. Isn't it interesting? And so there they are. They're speaking to Jesus. And uh, guess what they're talking about? The weather? No. Uh, 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 people getting saved. Verse 31. Who appeared in glory and spake of his decease. So these two characters appear on top of the mountain. Here's Jesus, three disciples, four of them. Now there's six. There's two men appear. What are they talking to Jesus about? Calvary. Because that's really all that really matters. They're up in heaven. Guess what they're talking about? About what he's about to accomplish on the cross. And then it says, verse 32, But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass as they departed with, uh, from him, Jesus said, uh, uh, excuse me, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. Lord, bless now the brief time we have. In Jesus' name, amen. So what do we do on the mountaintop? What have we done some of tonight? Number one, we talked about it. You want to talk about it. This event today, whatever led up to it, the week of visiting, the flyers, the bus rides, the invitations, the preaching, 
Everything that took place to the last little I got saved sticker, to the last kid that got dropped off at their house, to the buses that returned, to pulling back in, to the fellowship tonight, we need to talk about it. Sometimes we move on way too fast. Jesus said about Simon Peter, thou savorest not the things that be of the Lord or the things that be of God. We eat too fast, we swallow too fast. God is saying, reminisce about this day. Uh, think of the COVID days when it was pastor in the pulpit and one guy at the sound booth. Church locked up. Think of the day when we couldn't even run a bus or rent a bus or have a van. Think of the day when the tent is outside, it's pouring down rain, ladies are lifting up their feet as the river runs under them with electrical cards in the water to kill us all. The little portable choir rack where the choir could stand if they didn't fall off. I am thankful for this great day. We didn't know if we'd ever have another big day. But the Lord said, oh, I got big plans. My plan is so big. I'm a big savior. I'm a big God. I've got big plans. My salvation is big. It's great. Talk about it. What else are we supposed to do? Enjoy the view. When you get on top of a mountain, everything changes. Things are brighter. You can see other mountaintops, other peaks. You can look back and see where you came from. Enjoy the view. How come? Because there's valleys to come. I hate to tell you. You know, you can't live on the mountaintop. Nothing lives up there. It's called the tree line. If you've studied, trees and vegetation only grow so high, and then pretty soon it's kind of bare. The growth is always in the valley. That's where we grow. That's where the vegetation is. That's where the Lord walks with us, Psalm 23, through the valley of the shadow of death. But we need, uh, he balances mountaintop, valleys. Then a mountaintop and a valley. God knows how to balance that. But shout while you're on the mountaintop. Talk about it tonight. Text people. Guess what happened today? Guess what I saw? Talk about it. Enjoy the view. Number three, notice those around you. Peter, James, John, they said, that's Moses. We read about the guy. The ten, we saw him on the Ten Commandments movie. Or is that Charlton Heston? I don't know. But... They notice those around. This is Elijah, the guy we heard about, called fire from heaven. Look who we get to, and I want to say this, look who we get to serve with. I could go on and on. Here's a man with an amputated leg passing out flyers. Here's two ladies battling cancer in our church, passing out flyers, serving, knocking on doors, uh, 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 trying to help people. Uh, uh, we've had people with the flu this week, people with that hacking cough, just, 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 just serving. It's, it's not been easy for any... We've got great people in this church. Oh, by the way, time out. Happy birthday to Emily Plowman. Here at church on her birthday. Look at this. Happy birthday. Okay, back to the message. That's how my mind works these days. But notice who we get to serve with. I love that song, If You Could Have Seen Me, way back then. And look where God found you, and look where he has brought you. And look how he has used you. I don't know if God could ever use me again. Oh, yeah, he wants to. God's hard up. Doesn't have a whole lot of workers. He's, he's short on workers. He wants to use all of us. I just kind of walked around the, the amusement park today and just saw those stickers and I said, man, look at this. Because someone didn't quit. There were some kids that got saved today. <laughs> there was this teenage girl. She said, I said, uh, is that your first time? Yep, I got saved. I got the sticker right here. We got to see a lot of things like that today. Enjoy the view. Talk about it. And notice who you got to labor with today. Number four, what else? Decide to build something. Decide to build something. Peter, he's up there. He says, not only is there Moses and Elijah, he says, how about we build a monument, Jesus, to you and Moses and Elijah? Uh, let's. He had a desire to build something. I'm hoping that some... Some of us today and this week who just kind of tasted a bus router, tasted serving or t 
tasted some overtime work, and I'm hoping something welled up in our heart that said, it's time to build something. It's time to uh, be a teacher or build a class or reach a city or uh, uh, park out a bus every Sunday. Uh, it's just time to build something. You know, I was praying yesterday. I said, Lord, if we have a great day today, it will encourage other churches around our nation. If it can be done in Napa Valley that's known as the wine capital of the world, if a church can be built here and people can be reached, others are going to say, well, we ought to be doing it in our city. Notice those who we get to labor with. And then last, verse 36, it says, and when Moses and Elijah disappeared, went back to heaven, it was just Jesus alone. Give Jesus all the glory. He gave you health to serve. He gave you opportunity. He gave you freedom in a country where we can't witness. And then his mighty power is the one that saved people today. We will never know till we get to heaven really what happened today. We don't know really who was reached and what their life is going to do. We don't know how close they were. We just don't know. But he did some great things. Let's talk about Jesus this week. Let's brag on him. And I'm hoping if you've not already done it, you'll spend a little time alone before you pass out in the pew or maybe at your house. Just saying, Lord, boy, I gave him my best this week. I'm whooped. But I just want you to know it was because of you. I did it for you, and because of you it happened. Just want to thank you. And I think he'll be glad about that. I couldn't help but notice that blue sky yesterday. I'm freezing. My hat's blown off. I'm chasing it down the parking lot. I'm saying, this is ridiculous. Who is coming to this? It's like having a swimming party in Alaska in the Arctic or something. It's, no, Lord, unless you calm this down, we, it'd be a miracle to have blue sky. I looked out after church. Sky starting to turn blue right after church today. That was him. That was just all him. I think we had that cold weather so no one would make plans to go anywhere on Sunday. And then here it was. That's why we were almost the only ones at the whole amusement park because no one else thought about coming. It's just him. What to do on the mountaintop. I hope that we'll take some admonition from this uh, story here. Father, bless now this time. We love you. Thank you for giving us, I think, the greatest people in the world, not just laborers, but because of what they believe and who they love and who they love to serve and serve alongside of. Give our people rest. Thank you for safety, not an accident, not a wreck, not a person left behind. Calmness, Lord, it was all you. Thank you for bringing peace here today. I pray that uh, people with heavy burdens tonight listening online or here in person would for a few moments feel that they're lighter than they were because of their service. Help us see the big, big, big plan you have and the part we got to play in that today. Help our folks, please. Give them rest tonight. Encourage them. Our heads are bowed. Let's quietly stand. This will be an invitation. Maybe you just want to come and thank the Lord for something he did, maybe answering your prayer. Maybe there's just a burden in your heart you'd like to just come and lay at the altar tonight. How about you this evening? Enjoy the view. Let's keep talking about it. Notice the co-laborers around you. Let's always put the focus on Jesus. It's not us, it's him.